Notion Calendar is life-changing once you know how to use it. And I thought I'd make this video now, as Notion Calendar had a sneaky update that very few people noticed, but it made it even more powerful. You can edit properties in the Notion Calendar app, so you don't have to go into Notion in order to edit properties anymore. And you can now color code your tasks, which I know a lot of you have been waiting for. So today we'll go through what is Notion Calendar, how to set up your Notion Calendar, the side menu properties, planning your week in Notion Calendar, how to access your task list in Notion Calendar, how to color code in Notion Calendar, and how to automatically time track in Notion Calendar. Subscribe for Notion tutorials, let's dive in. So for this tutorial, I'll be using Headquarters, which is my premium Notion template. There's a link in the description if you're interested, but of course you can follow along with your own dashboard. So this here is a Notion Calendar database. So if I click on these settings here, you can see layout. This here is the calendar database view. Now this here is not the same as the Notion Calendar app, which is nice and confusing because they're called pretty much the same thing. So let's go through how to set up your Notion Calendar. So in your dashboard, you are going to want to have a view of your tasks as a calendar. So tasks and a calendar are the same thing, but calendar events just have a date associated with them. But you'll want to see your tasks as a calendar database view. And then you can see this button here, manage in calendar. Now, if you're a headquarters user and you want to connect, what you're going to do is click on all this week and then click on managing calendar. If you click on weeks tasks here and connect that, there's a filter here to only show tasks that are not complete yet, meaning you won't see completed tasks in your Notion calendar. So be sure to click on all this week and then click on manage in calendar. Now that you've done that, you'll see this here on the side, my task list as the default. So if you haven't used Notion calendar before, you'll only have this one database here. And you can click on these three dots here to change the color as well. So you can make this orange if you prefer. Now this here will be your default. If you have others in here, then you can change which one you want to be the default. So all that means is when you highlight here and write task, that will automatically then add it to this default database instead of another database, as you might have another database by default. So now that I've added this hypothetical task here from 9 to 11 on Tuesday the 4th, if I go back to headquarters here, I can see this task sitting here in my day today, and I can see it sitting here again on Tuesday the 4th. If I click on it, I can see 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So this task here is the same as this task here. So if I were to change this from 9 to 12, if I go back to headquarters, it now says 9 to 12. So that is how to set up and connect your Notion calendar. Now let's talk about the side menu. So now if we click on a task, we can now change these properties here on the side, which we weren't able to before. So that's very exciting. Obviously, these properties here are specific to headquarters. So if I click on here, they are these properties here. Obviously, if you're using your own setup and you don't have these properties, then you'll see a different list of properties here on the side. So I can change the urgency. I can change the importance. I can change the state, etc. And if I change it in here, so let's say that this task here moved the needle as an example, and I check it in. In headquarters here, you can see this has moved the needle and it's checked in. And because it's all connected, if I go to the move the needle page, for example, I can see that task sitting here. Now, from my understanding, they don't have the properties here of relations, so you can't change that in here. But if you have a Notion paid account, then what I recommend is setting up automations. So I actually have about 20 to 30 in my personal account that trigger automations from specific words. So in my account, if I write REC, for example, then the automation knows to automatically trigger that with the bucket here of business, meaning I can write tasks like edit video. And I have the automation that if the word edit is showing up in the task, then it will automatically assign that with the buckets of business, which saves me a bit of time. Again, to use Notion automations, you do require a paid Notion account. But still on the side here, it is quite useful to just be able to tick in tasks if they are complete or not. Now that we understand properties, let's talk about planning your week. So as you can see, this REC video comes up here at the top. The reason it's sitting here and not along with these tasks is because these here have times associated with them, as you can see. But this REC video here just has the date associated with it. But what I can do is simply drag it from the top here down into my day. And then I can extend the time like this. I can also obviously drag it to any single time of the week. Up here, you can click on these two here to move between the weeks. You can click here on today to quickly jump back to today's date, obviously. And then here in the drop down, you can change from week to month and you can even do a specific number of days if you want to view six days for some weird reason. But the month view here can be quite useful. You can quickly scroll through the months like this. Now, just to mention, because I've gotten an email about this, these here are not just showing up in your Notion calendar. Like I mentioned, they are connected to this database. So the calendar app is not actually storing these. 
It's simply showing you them from a specific Notion database. So the database here is called my task list. So if I were to delete this task here, I'm deleting it in here. And the same idea, if I were to delete a task from this view, the Notion calendar app is simply visualizing this database here, the one that I chose to click on managing calendar for. Now headquarters users know that I like to create my task list in here like this and then assign urgency and importance like this. I'll just quickly randomly add stuff like that. As you can see, the task list got reordered based on the importance and urgency. And then I also like to add a state of mind. So let's just say these two here are flow and this one here is easy. And then for this completed task here, let's just say that it is personal. So instead of time blocking in here, what you'll do is simply drag these tasks here to the day or click here and add them to the day. And then they'll show up here at the top and you can simply drag them down to start planning out your day. So that is the way you would time block in Notion. Or like I showed before, you can instantly add a task, task five, you can add it directly in here. How to access your task list in Notion Calendar. Now, so far we've looked at tasks that have a specific date associated with them. What if you have tasks, so let's say task six here, that don't have a date associated with them. How do we see that in Notion Calendar? Well, in Notion Calendar here, what you can do is click on the database and here we can see all the tasks this week. So now I can simply drag this here to whenever I want to do it, just like that. Now you're obviously seeing all the other tasks as well. So I'm going to show you now how to have two database views inside of Notion Calendar. In headquarters, we have a view called the no date view. This here is simply a filter saying where the date is empty. So let's add a task here, task seven. What we can now do is right click on no date and do manage in calendar. And as you can see, this no date now shows up here. So if I click here on the side now, I'm going to see all of the tasks that don't have a date associated with them. So I can simply now drag them in to here and what will happen is this here is going to change from purple to orange. This might take a while depending on your internet speed. So now here on the side, if you have an idea for a task but it doesn't have a date associated with it, you click here on no date and do create a new page. So here I can say task eight and then that can be stored there and you'll simply click here to close that menu. And now when you're ready to add it, you simply drag it to when you're going to do it. So let's say here from 12 to one. And then when I refresh the page, it changes from purple to orange again. So that is how to access your task list in Notion Calendar. How to add color settings to your Notion Calendar. All right, so in here, all of these now are orange. But as I showed you before, we had these purple tasks that get automatically changed to orange once they're added. But what I'm going to do is change these here to have the default color instead of gray. And now instead, I want these tasks here to have the color code dependent of the state of mind. So in headquarters, we have flow state, quick, easy, and personal. And so because of that, I want to have tasks that are blue, gray, yellow, and purple. So here's what I'm going to do. I will right click on all this week. Do not right click on weeks tasks or my months, right click on all this week. And here we'll do duplicate. And this here will be flow. So what I want to do in this flow here is to add a filter to say only filter this to show the tasks that are flow state tasks. And now that we have this setting here, what I'll do is click on manage in calendar. So now you can see the flow shows up here on the side. And what I can do is drag this here to the top. So now these tasks here got changed to blue. And now we'll do the same thing for the other ones. We'll right click on flow. I'll change this here to easy. And I'll simply filter this to say, only show me the tasks that are easy. And you know what? We'll also do the quick tasks for this. So easy and quick tasks. And then I'll click here on manage in calendar. So now I have these easy tasks and I'll drag that up and I'll change this here to have the color instead of yellow. And now we'll do the same thing for the personal tasks. We'll right click on easy. I'll write personal, change the filter here to be only show me personal tasks and click on managing calendar. And they here are purple. Now these no date tasks here are also purple, which will be confusing. So I'll change that to red. So now I can quickly see this with color coding. This here is a personal task. This is a flow state task. This is a quick task, flow state task. And these gray ones here haven't been labeled. So if I now change these to a flow state, it turns blue. If I change this here to easy, it changes to yellow. If I change this to personal, that changes to purple. So now our tasks are being color coded in Notion Calendar. How to set up time tracking in Notion Calendar. So in here we have nine to 12 and nine to 10 and 10 to 11, et cetera. And that data is showing up here. So I can click here and see nine to 12, but this here isn't very useful to me from a user interface perspective. So what I can do is click here on add property and we can add a formula here. And I'll put this formula in the description so you can copy and paste it. This here is the formula and it's very simple. It's just saying, show me the difference between the end of the date, so 12, 
and the start of the date, which is nine, and show me that information in minutes. And the formula is as simple as that. So I can see here 60, I can see here 60. All of these here are automatically being converted into time tracking data. So what we'll do here is just check in all of these tasks here. Now, if you're using headquarters, what you can do is scroll down here and go to the time tracking page. Now, like I mentioned before, sadly, we can't select the project and bucket here on the side. So these tasks now are currently showing up under timer buckets under no buckets. So what you can do now is select the project and bucket like this. So business, business. And as you can see, they jump down into business here. And I can also select the projects. So project A, I'll just add a new one, add that like that. And they'll show up here as well on time on projects. Now by default in headquarters, the time tracking page is the minutes property, which is the manually filled out one. But since we're doing that now automatically in Notion calendar, what we'll do is click on the settings here, click on property visibility and say we want to see this formula here. So now I can see this formula showing up here on the side. And then obviously I can hide this hours here and hide this minutes as well. And then here we can calculate and say, show me the sum. So we're just changing which properties we want to see instead. So I can see now on project A, I've spent 120 minutes. And this time tracking data here is coming from our Notion calendar. So maybe at the end of the day or at the end of the week, you can assign the project in the bucket. Or if you're like me and you use Notion calendar a lot, you can set up some automations that automatically assign them based on some naming conventions that you've set up. If you're interested in headquarters, then click on this video here for a full tour. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this useful.